Hi YouTube, welcome to Gold Bug Asia. I want to make this video about uh, buying and selling gold uh, in Hong Kong. So uh, if you ever walk into a gold shop in Hong Kong, it's probably a little bit confusing for a foreigner uh, going there for the first time because the prices are not quoted in ounces. So what do you do? So uh, it also depends on what region you buy. Um, the prices are a little bit different. Uh, the, in addition, there's some fee structures you need to be aware of. So let's talk about all of that today. So first thing uh, you want to do is uh, uh, when you are uh, navigating is that you want to firstly um, take a look at, I'm trying to close this logo here. Uh, you want to firstly um, be uh, taking a look at uh, the prices of uh, uh, the, uh, the gold on the market. So what I typically do is, uh, what you want to do is navigate to one of the popular sites uh, in the region. Uh, for example, uh, Keiko here is one I commonly use. I'll create another video later about some of the other sites uh, that I commonly go uh, to look at and that I actually uh, buy from. So. Now, one of the things I typically take a look at, aside from the spot price, which we'll look at shortly, is the prices of the um, maple, because the, this is the one of the coins that's, uh, you know, very commonly traded, cheaper than the eagle, um, so it's one of my common reference points. Um, Secondly, obviously, you want to uh, take a quick look at the uh, the actual uh, spot prices itself. So, um, in this case, uh, the spot price today, which is January 17, 2017, is um, uh, 1216. So you want to make sure you're quoting those two numbers so that you can do your comparison. So. Secondly, uh, obviously, if you walk to shop, or you probably want to do is just keep an app uh, open uh, on your phone. Uh, what I've done here is just gone straight to uh, one of the jewelry uh, shops here, uh, Chosen Saying, uh, one of the more popular ones in Hong Kong. Um, uh, they, on the online, they actually do pr provide the prices, which you should see the same in their shop as well. Um, usually, I have never seen cases which, you know, that's actually different, depend if, in terms of what's on the website versus what they have on the store, they're pretty good with that. Uh, so just take a look at that. Either you know, if you walk in the store, you can or you can calculate this uh, in advance. You will notice prices calculating tail. Tail is one of the units commonly used, uh, I guess, in traditionally um, in the Chinese uh, society. So okay, so let's take a quick look at uh, a spreadsheet I've created. And the purpose of the video is kind of just to explain to you about the spreadsheet and how you can look at it. Uh, and I'll see where I can post this uh, link up if people are looking for the spreadsheet so that they can uh, use this uh, on, at their own leisure as well. So leave me a message if you have, uh, um, uh, if you would like to see the spreadsheet, uh, the post is somewhere. Okay, so first of all, the first thing I just want to draw to your attention is just a table on the, on the right-hand corner. So sorry, ignore all this other calculation. I'll go into some detail shortly. What you want to take a look at here is the exchange, right, in terms of between tail uh, to grams to ounces and tro troy ounce. So you want to make sure you're not confused between ounce and troy ounce because both of them are called ounces. Uh, where the uh, most of the uh, the what's quoted on the market is essentially troy ounce. There is a difference. You will see that uh, all the units here in terms of grams, so one ounce is actually 28.349 uh, gram, while a troy ounce, which is typically what you see in a single one ounce coin, they actually one troy ounce coin, which is actually 31.103 gram. Uh, you will commonly see gram being quoted because in the uh, Chinese market, they're typically quoted by uh, price of per gram per Chinese yuan. And again, also quote the, the tail unit that you keep seeing, uh, which is equivalent to 37.423, uh, 429 gram. Okay, so now that I have the conversion table set, you can kind of be able to know how to write very quickly convert from tail to Troy ounce, right? Because you need to make that conversion to compare to the spot price, uh, which we were just looking at earlier. So I did this uh, update this table just before it, uh, this recording. Uh, the price I copy over, which you saw earlier, is uh, one two one six point one six uh, on the spot price of today, January seventeenth for two thousand seventeen. Again, you can you know always go back to some history site to take a look at uh, what the spot price uh, should be. So. 
typically what happens is when you walk into one of these uh, jewelry gold shops, you will see their prices again quoted in tail. Um, and it's typically, let's just say, if, let's just say if you're in Hong Kong, it'll be quoted in tail per Hong Kong dollar, right? So here I have the uh, 13250. Uh, which is the number I took uh, earlier. Uh, I think it shouldn't be too much far from what's, okay, maybe it just actually, it's probably just dropped a little bit. Uh, actually, no, it's right. Uh, the uh, the sell price, right, 13250. So that's the price I took over. So uh, what you what we want to do, take a quick look here, is actually to understand the uh, jewelry shop, which, you know, there's many big uh, brand names. Uh, there's Tel Tai Fu, uh, there's uh, Chou Shen Shen, uh, there's uh, probably a dozen, half a dozen uh, uh, shops that's, you know, um, big brands and there's also tons of little shops, just, you know, individual stores. But let's take a look at these big shops and how much profit margin they're actually making. Um, so I'll, I'll actually cut the story short and just tell you how much profit margin they're making and then we can go into some of the details and how you can actually um, buy gold uh, from them with minimal profit margin. So. Uh, uh, the short story is around 25%, right, 24.46, and probably as low as uh, 16 or 17%, which is uh, the lowest you can get, assuming you're buying something in an item without fees, okay, or minimal fees. So let's talk about those fees uh, uh, in just a second. Okay, so now, first of all, let's also clear the confusion between the difference between jewelry grade and bars. Okay, so what happened is you have CT two prices, one called jewelry grade, one called bars. So in the traditional uh, Chinese trading market, uh, the local people uh, trade something kind of like a small bar, uh, but it does also have a, a stamp on it, um, indicate uh, it, you know, of its origin. Um, now, typically the bars historically has been, I'm just going to type in here, uh, they're either 0 0.990 or 0.999 purity. Okay. Now, obviously, uh, in today's standard, uh, the jewelry grade is there essentially saying it's 0.9999, the, the four nines, uh, uh, which is typically what you see in coins as well. I think for some of the shop, they, they might still uh, only mark the items as 0.999. Anyways, it's pretty much a mute point. Um, but what happened is uh, the store will claim, if you ask them, so what's the jewelry grade? Uh, they're typically, you will see that it's uh, essentially 0.999, or maybe, you know, four nines. Uh, I think most of the time they still only mark uh, 0.999, so it's going to leave that there uh, as 0.999. So, in short, between the jewelry grade and the bars, there is no difference, okay, in terms of the quality of the gold. Um, now, what happened is the, the, ma the majority, the real difference is depending on which shop you buy it from. So technically, if you buy it from one shop, uh, we'll cover this um, probably in a uh, different video in terms of about selling it back to the store, uh, is that you will find that uh, th there's a difference of 10% in terms of if you were to buy from one store and sell it to another store, uh, they will charge you 10% for taking back the gold of another store. Essentially, they're putting a premium on their logo on their gold, and they call it jewelry grade, because if you really ask them and understand technical details, there is no purity difference between jewelry grade and the bars or regular grade. Okay, so they just have two classifications. So why don't you just buy the bar and the regular grade? The issue is essentially they will buy back Essentially, have never seen. Uh, I've actually never gone to a store. Uh, actually, have seen a few times which they have been selling, but most of the time they don't sell this. I think the when they do sell is when prices of gold is on a rise. Uh, I have been to shop uh, about ten times, a very different shop, asking to buy just the you know the nuggets they call it, right? Um, essentially, they said, oh, you know, it's sold out pretty much all the time. <clears throat> okay. So let's clear that confusion uh, about that. So most of the time what you will be buying is a jewelry grade. I'll do more investigation at a later time uh, and report back about, you know, being able to buy these nuggets or bars, right, okay, uh, from the, uh, the predominant shops. Okay, so again, uh, most of my investigation uh, or my experience has been around buying from these big shops. I haven't really gone to some of the smaller shops uh, in terms of, uh, you know, the ones which you don't recognize the name, uh, in terms of trying to find out, you know, what is their pricing structure. But let's just focus on uh, the, the prices you see and on the big shop for now. 
Okay, so uh, what you will also see is obviously, as we mentioned before, the prices will be quoted in tail. Uh, you will see the selling price, the buying price, and you might also see in gram. So let's just ignore gram for now, just focus on tail. For the Chinese user, they probably, you know, are more used to seeing the prices in gram. So again, this is today's price. So the key thing you want to focus on is this. Even on the screen, you will see at least four numbers. A lot of times you'll see eight because they have the number both in tail and gram. So let's just say you're only looking at the tail price. Ignore the bar price because technically uh, you won't be buying, will be able to buy from them. Uh, the selling price of them are not too much difference. But essentially, uh, if you uh, are looking at selling to them, uh, interesting thing is that as long as you bring back gold of their brand, the uh, the spot price of um, these in terms of selling back to them is actually very very good because if I, if you do the calculation, uh, hopefully I have done it correct. I double check quite a few times. I used to use the spreadsheet myself. Is that you will find that uh, by selling gold back to them. Um, they, it, you're actually only selling $5 under spot, right? So this is a $5 um, divided by the spot price, which is um, literally, I think, a very small percentage. I have to mark this with the uh, percentage marker. All right, so you're literally looking at 0.37, you know, percent um, that, you know, that they're making, really. Um, so so now, so where do they make most of the money? So they actually make money when they sell you the jewelry. Okay, and what, what I mean by that is they don't make money in terms of if you bought the jewelry and if you were to sell it back to them, uh, first the spot price is really good because most of you know um, that, uh, you know, you know, make another video on this later. In most of the uh, places when you are trying to sell your gold to a uh, dealer, uh, let's just say I'm talking about gold bullion coins like either maples or eagles, if you sell it back to the coin, most of the time they'll be buying back to fund you about 0.98. Uh, percent of the uh, sorry 98 percent not point eight eight percent 98 percent of the spot price right so they essentially make two percent off of that but obviously they are making a lot more because there's a premium uh, on top of all the the, the coins right okay so we'll, we'll get to that in a different video uh, uh, about you know coins buying and selling but I think there's a lot, a lot of video on the internet on that as well so I won't focus that on that area so let's get back to um, in terms of buying, so again, you will see the price of let's just say thirteen to fifty per Hong Kong dollar per tail. So what you want to firstly do is convert that to Troy ounce. So the quick conversion here is obviously using the table, right? You take the uh, the tail price divided by well, I'm just using the grand of the uh, lowest common denominator here. So divide by thirty seven point four two nine to get price per gram. Multiply back by thirty one point one zero three. So that was my formula I was just showing you that. So that would actually today's price would equal to one one oh one one Hong Kong dollar. And I have a, in order to really compare to the the spot price, uh, I will convert that number back to a, a US dollar. I just used the common seven point seven five fixed exchange rate um, to the US. Um, so if you were to take a quick look at that, essentially you're looking at. Uh, uh, 1421 uh, versus a uh, spot price of uh, 1216 and you can obviously do a quick cal calculation on um, how much that equal to in terms of percentage um, so now okay maybe we'll do a quick math here right just, just divide by that you will see I have to fix my uh, percentage again uh, paste my formula over okay so that's essentially at about 16.82 oh actually I repeated down here already so yeah, so that's where I got the number in terms of the uh, the 16 uh, uh, percentage was you know close to 17 percent uh, profit margin margin that they're actually making just on the price of the jewelry grade gold itself. Now, what you probably have to pay attention to now is when you buy from them, at least in Hong Kong, they add additional two percent. They call it yong, which is actually uh, I call it the handling fee. Right, which is this kind of like the sales uh, sales commission fee, if you like to call it, uh, to be more accurate. Now, secondly, most items will actually come with another fee called gong, uh, which actually stands for workmanship. Um, so, which means depending on the pieces, usually the more complicated the pieces, the higher this second workmanship fee is going to be. Most of the time, I have seen items uh, uh, around 500 Hong Kong dollars for a piece. Uh, some of them have seen as high as uh, two, three thousand Hong Kong dollars for a you know much, uh, much bigger, uh, much heavier, I should say, 
uh, piece of jewelry. Uh, either way, so you do want to divide that back down to uh, Troy now. So I'm just going to roughly use a 500 uh, um, uh, Hong Kong dollar piece uh, Troy ounce for the quote. Uh, they are pieces which have no gong, no workmanship fee. They're typically um, one of those, uh, uh, like they're like a small little bar that you can bend to make a ring. Uh, so those very simple ones, they sometimes have seen them uh, without any workmanship fee. So obviously, if you're just not looking for aesthetics, just looking for, you know, as an investment, you will want to consider one with uh, just the um, uh, no workmanship fee or no gong fee, okay? Um, and you can get away with the yong, which is the uh, the commission fee, okay, uh, at least in Hong Kong. Um, I think the commission fee uh, the, applies both, I'm pretty sure it applies for both when you're buying and when you're selling. Again, a different video on selling to them and what to look for. And, I, and obviously, I'll make a video about what to look for when you buy from them as well. So some technical uh, other detail to watch out for. Okay, so today, so this video, let's continue to focus on the, the pricing. So, you know, just not to be a broken record, but I'm just going to repeat what I kind of just did here and to kind of explain my table to you, uh, you know, show you and I'll get this version of my spreadsheet so you can take a look at. So, essentially what I did here is I retook the 13250, assuming that, you know, I, assuming you don't consider the other fees of um, the workmanship and the, uh, the commission fee. Uh, I think if we divide that back out to a gram, that's, you know, 354 uh, Hong Kong dollar per gram. And then uh, here's the Troy ounce price, right, which is what you saw here. Essentially, the right-hand side, uh, everything in gray is just a calculated field. That's why I kind of make that in gray. Um, and uh, what you will see here is uh, uh, here's the U.S. dollar equivalent, right? So which means the, the, the buy price here uh, per teal was actually 1710, but again, that's per tail, right? But really the price uh, per twenty ounce fourteen twenty one, which we also calculated up here. Finally, the so what is the delta to spark, which is two hundred and five dollar, which is about sixteen point eight two, it's close to seventeen percent. Uh what I actually did here on the right hand side is actually it's Took a quick look at the spread, which you mean the total spread between buying and selling, right? Because obviously they have to make some profit from buying back the gold. Uh, so that's about 17.19% from the jewelry grade, right? Just a little bit more, pretty much you added both of these uh, uh, profit margin for them. And again, I did the same thing down here for the bars. Uh, for the bars, if you're able to buy from them, um, they are making about 11.75% uh, off the spot uh, from you. So that this is very interesting because what you want to do is actually take a quick look at if you have to buy the bars, how does it compare to the maple? Because you know maple is a, as a coin. So actually, uh, we'll probably do two things. Uh, we'll do a quick look up on the price of the maple and the price of the uh, um, the single. Uh, sorry, this is, you know not meant to to be advertising. Uh, and for the price of a bar because those are typically pretty cheap as well, right? So I'm going to take a look at the single one ounce uh, RCM bar. They just mark it as a uh, Keiko here. But anyways, it's uh, 1245.8. So let's take that number as well. And then this was the price of the uh, maple earlier, 1245.8. Okay, so I'm going to type it down here, 1245.8. This is the bar, and the maple was a 1268. Um, you know, I'm just going to cut out the... Uh, the decimals, okay, I'm just gonna make this a six. And so this is the maple, and this is, uh, so if you look at it, and again, the spot price today was up there, 1216, I'll just type it down here for convenience. And as we were saying earlier, if you buy from the bars, from the jewelry, so you can call it a jewelry bars, if you like to call it. Uh, the jewelry bars are the 1275, okay? So if you do the calculation here, um, if you were to divide this out, okay, so that's about 5%, right? Um, and the maple is about uh, 4%. Um, and if you were to buy like a, a bar, right, like a typical bar, it's about, you know, 2.5%. So uh, ultimately, if you're looking at it, why would you even buy the bars from the jewelry shop? Uh, because it's kind of like their version of the bars, right? Um, but if you look at it, this is uh, you know four point uh, close to you know four point eight percent to be accurate, 
uh, which is a heavier premium than just buying a maple coin, but maybe a little bit cheaper than buying an eagle. Um, but it is uh, much heavier uh, compared to a bar, right? Like let's just say RCM one ounce bar, which was which was what we we're looking at earlier. Um, and uh, so, but the, the key interesting thing is when you do the buyback, because typically when you do the buyback, as I was saying, uh, sometimes, sometimes I've seen shops that will buy back at the point, the maples to buy, buy back at the uh, 99%, which means they only to make 1%, but most of the time I see, you know, if you're just selling a single ounce, they're uh, buying back at about 0.98. So, okay, so I'm gonna multiply that out, right? So typically, uh, let's just say I'm going to multiply that by, uh, you know, multiply by the, uh, let's just say 0.1%, right, 0 0.01. So that's about $12.68. Um, but the good thing is, what I mean by that, why I did this calculation here is, if you were to sell a maple back to a shop, assuming they're making the one, the you know, the 1%, but usually the two, you actually give it in, you know, $12.68 versus a spot price. Well, if you do the 2%, it's actually $25. But however, if you take a look at it, if you were to sell the bars back to the gold shop, so if you buy their, you know, their bars, they're only making $2 from you, okay? So that kind of makes up for the difference, which means, yes, if you were to buy, uh, you know, pay them the 4.8% uh, the, the uh, premium, uh, when they are making it back from you, they are, um, you know, essentially only making $2 from you or very, very low uh, in terms of very, very close to spot price when you sell it back to them, okay? So I think that may make it up a little bit because the other way you want to look at this is, okay, technically if I know it's 1% to 2%, percent i can add a, you know, 0, 0 0.0, let's just say 2 here. Okay, so technically, if you want to say, hey, uh, buying a maple, I'm pay paying this much, uh, you know, 4.2% premium, but when I sell back, I have to pay about 2% premium uh, to the, you know, buyer to spot. So therefore, it's end up to be about like 1.062, right? While if I were to, you know, sell it back to these guys, I think this comes up to probably negligible, right? It's probably going to be like... Let's just okay, let me redo this. This divide by the spot price. I think I'm doing this right. Right, it's you know point two point uh, two percent. So uh, if you were to buy and sell the uh, the gold bars, one point oh. Uh, sorry, I'm gonna do this minus this number. Right. Uh, oh, sorry for that. Okay, so it's gonna be this number minus this number, okay? So it's going to be, uh, you know, in terms of percentage, it's going to be only 5%. So ultimately what I'm saying is buying and selling the bars is actually better than buying and, you know, buying and selling the maple. But however, you know, just to, for the sake of completeness, uh, take a look at this and say, hey, if I, I, I'm going to change all this formula to percentage for, in case I'm confusing, you know, those of you can't do <laughs> math well, uh, I'm going to convert everything to percentage. Um, if you were actually to buy and sell a bar, actually, I, I haven't had too much experience selling the one ounce bars, uh, but I think, let's just say, you are also getting approximately the same premium. Uh, I, I, would, I would say at least 2%. Let's just let, let me gonna say, let me gonna guess 2%, okay? So I'm gonna say this plus 0 0.02, okay? So I, I would say roughly buying and selling the gold bars is like buying and selling the gold bars from, you know, uh, from like RCM or one of those reputable sources. Versus, uh, if you're to buy and sell at these jewelry, those the traditional um, bars in the store. Okay, so uh, that's it for the video. Um, uh, oh yeah, final notes. So I want to talk about uh, the I have experience of uh, buying and looking at buying the gold either in Hong Kong versus Macau versus Taiwan versus mainland. So obviously, you know, the taxes in mainland. Uh, and the other thing about, you know, cross-border <laughs> buying, and I'll make another video on that, is you cannot legally actually bring gold out of China. I actually went to the custom in China one day and say, hey, can I bring gold back, gold out? They actually say, no, but you can bring it in. I'll, I'll make another video on that later. But essentially, if you do the price checks, you will find that uh, when they quote the prices, first of all, it's obviously in GC and Y. I actually did a comparison just uh, today, also on uh, the uh, the same uh, uh, Joseph Sen website. Uh, their website in China, they quoted uh, you know 348 uh, Chinese yuan per gram. If you divide that back out, it's actually uh, 14 uh, 489. So if you divide this 
two number, right? I'm using today's exchange rate because uh, you know actually Hong Kong dollar went up quite a bit against you know, U.S. and Chinese exchange rate changed quite a bit recently. Uh, it's now the 0.899 today's exchange rate. Uh, you will find that overall, even if you multiply it out in exchange rate, buying in China is still going to be 10% more. So don't buy in China, obviously. Um, now, secondly, <laughs> if you were to go to Macau, they will claim that that uh, they uh, their prices are like 1% cheaper uh, due to some gov government sponsorship. This is what the local clerk told me. I haven't really looked up the details. Um, that they say, oh, it is cheaper to buy in Macau. However, you do want to be pay attention because most of the time when you buy the pieces, the yong and the gong fee is going to be different by country. So ultimately, what you want to do is add up all the fees, which I'll talk about here. Uh, at the end of the video and to calculate what is your effective total price per troy ounce, right, and compared to the spot price. Um, last thing why, why there's such a big difference is if you were to actually now go to Taiwan, uh, so, so no, just go back to like Hong Kong and Macau, I think price is very, pretty much very closely. I have to, you know, uh, if I have time next time when I make a video, I'll, I'll pick up some of my receipt and do some comparison for you guys. But uh, when I did it in Taiwan, I found, wow, first of all, there is no yong, so which means there is no commission fee. And like, wow, that saved me 2%. But then I look at some of the pieces that I recognize the craftsmanship it's a lot more expensive. So in summary, I found that a Taiwan shop, I, I don't have details right now. When I visit Taiwan next hour, you can pick up some slip and maybe try to compare some of the same pieces to give you guys exact, exact numbers. Um, I, I find buying in Taiwan, the fees was actually so much more. Usually I think the fees was actually two or maybe three times more. Uh, so if you multi, multiply that out, it's actually the fees will be more than the commission. Okay, so buying in Taiwan is actually no cheaper. Uh, at least several of the stores that I have, again, same brands. Uh, I'm not comparing different brands, same brand, but in, uh, you know, in Taiwan, it was actually expensive as well. So my uh, total experience is either buy from Macau or buy uh, from um, Hong Kong. Uh, there are also some strategies about buying from Hong Kong, uh, sorry, buying in Macau, which I'll talk about as well, uh, that you can take advantage of. Uh, I'll cover that in another video as well as you know, what to watch out for when buying from Hong Kong, uh, sorry, buying from Macau. Uh, okay, so last thing I wanna cover is again, uh, I think I was when going through this earlier is uh, when you use this you know, spreadsheet calculator, make sure that you're calculating the effective total price, uh, which you know, I already went through this earlier in the video, which is include the commission fee, right? I mean, if you were to do this for Macau, this will be zero. Uh, sorry, uh, maybe like it's one or 2%. I think it's lower. Uh, but let's just say if you're in Taiwan, there is no commission fee, but then you wanna add the, uh, the, uh, the craftsmanship and calculate the total, you know, divide by per ounce and calculate how much it is you actually paying per ounce versus the spot price, okay? And that's it for the video. Thank you so much. Hopefully this helps a lot of people. Uh, it definitely helped me. Then I'll try to make this uh, spreadsheet available as well. Thank you.